My name's Kath Murdoch and I say to children that I am a teacher who teaches teachers about teaching. I started off as a primary teacher and uh, have also worked in teacher education and now work around the world uh, working with teachers in classrooms, running workshops in inquiry-based learning. Well, it's the perfect vehicle for uh, growing children's sense of agency as a learner. In an inquiry-based classroom, children are learning how to learn because they are actively involved in seeking answers to their questions, in investigating the skills that are associated with inquiry are skills that we use in everyday life. We always need to know what to do when we don't know, and that's what inquiry learning's all about. The environment is a critical part of the inquiry approach. Teachers need to curate the environment so that it becomes a habitat for wonder. Classrooms should be places that provoke curiosity and engagement. Much of that has to do with the kind of materials that we choose to use with students and the flexibility that the space affords. So in an inquiry classroom, we want students to be able to move, to learn in different parts of the classroom, to be able to move beyond the classroom. The outdoor environment is a really important part of our thinking as we're designing spaces. And of course, in many ways, an inquiry approach requires us to think of the classroom as beyond the four walls, even beyond the school, the community, the world around us becomes our source of information and our uh, place to investigate. I think one of the keys to growing an inquiry-based school is actually to position the teachers as inquirers. The best inquiry schools I work in are staffed by people who see themselves as researchers every day. Their children are the, if you like, subject of their research. They bring an inquiry stance to their teaching. Uh, leaders in schools need to give teachers opportunities to investigate the work that they do and to explore student learning. I think schools that become inquiry schools are places that nurture teachers as learners and as inquirers. Inquiry does require a teacher to have a repertoire of strategies, strategies that are value added. Uh, perhaps broadly speaking, one of the most important approaches is what I would call release of responsibility. Many, many teachers know about the importance of gradual release of responsibility, particularly in the area of literacy. In an inquiry classroom, sometimes we have to re release more immediately a strategy of allowing students to see what they can figure out for themselves, not by themselves. It's not that we abandon them to go and figure it out. We are there to support, to scaffold, but the strategy of allowing the student to problem solve, to theorise. Um, the importance, I think, also for teachers to listen and observe, to know when not to speak, when not to provide too much support. And then finally, I think in my repertoire of strategies are a host of visible thinking routines, various ways that I can help children make their thinking visible and audible to me so I know where I might take them next. I see lots of great connections between your work at Early Excellence and my work on inquiry. The emphasis that the centre places on supporting teachers in designing their environments and using materials that foster real child-centred learning and investigation through play, that in itself is a, a perfect connection with inquiry. Many of the people with whom you've been associated here at the centre are also strongly connected to a child-centred and inquiry-based way of learning. Uh, one person in particular, Guy Claxton, who I know you've done quite a bit of work with, um, his work on building learning power has really strengthened my work on inquiry, really looking at how do we grow children as 
uh, powered up learning individuals. I think there are great connections too with the emphasis on well-being that has been part of your recent work. In an inquiry classroom, first and foremost, we need to ensure that children feel emotionally safe so that they can take the risks that we ask of them when we uh, provoke questions, we invite their theories, we encourage them to explore. In order to do that, you need to feel safe and supported, so wellbeing is the key. I love the fact that you really have to think about the child and what they're thinking and ask them questions constantly. And it really makes you think about how you're going to ask them and what you're going to do next, which she really portrays in a great way. I think it's about being reflective about your environment and constantly asking yourself a question and putting yourselves in the place of the children to see what excites the children, um, what lines of development they would like to um, visit and revisit. Um, and then as a practitioner, how you're going to consolidate and refine skills within the curriculum and give those opportunities for the children to explore these, these different fascinations. I think we will be able to move away from um, focusing on a, a rigid topic um, and deciding what we want to teach the children about that topic and it will become more open-ended for the children to be more independent learners and, and more inquiring about the aspects of particular things that they want to know about. We'd be creating a foundation for lifelong learners that can move those skills across to anything that they want to learn because actually it's the explorers, investigators and that is what we want, that positive learning and wanting to learn. And I think that the way forward is to, to do it in that way um, and provide that foundation for the children.